Hello, girls, and welcome to my Sunday meeting. Uh, today, hopefully, we're going to talk about biscuits. Because uh, in England, in the UK, they are very important in our daily life. As it says here, what would a cup of tea be like without a biscuit? It certainly wouldn't be a pleasurable experience. If you are anything like the typical consumer in the UK, you are predicted to eat almost 800 biscuits a year. Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> the Brits are so addicted to biscuits. Oh my God. So this is, I saw this and I thought it looked interesting. So this is why I chose it. So, Nisa, would you start to read our vocabulary for today? Yes. Dunking, dipping something like a biscuit into liquid for a short period of time. Okay. Fit for consumption. Com consumption. Consumption. Edible or can be eaten. Right. Edible can be eaten. Sustance, sustenance, sustenance, sustenance yeah. food. food, prominence, important or well known, sugar rush, get a quick blast of energy. Right. And Sylvia, you will read the next column. To nibble something, to take a small bite. One minute. So it's like a little mouse. If you can imagine a little mouse with a piece of cheese, uh -huh. that's nibble, right? Uh -huh. Okay. Just to take his uh, okay to take his mind right to chuck to tuck into to eat with eagerly so to eat something with a lot of uh pleasure pleasure okay eagerly is like it's yes pleasure. you want okay. to do it you and it's and it's you're motivated to do it okay and savory salty right savory is salty so some of these words will be in the reading so this is why it, so all I want you to do, you don't need to say the name of the person, you just read to need one each, right? So Nisa, if you will start and everyone will continue down reading one person each, off you go. Okay, in this program, we are talking about biscuits. Biscuits, a subject very close to my hair, something important to me and that into, I, I, I can see the next word. <laughs> and interest me. Okay, interest me. I know, Rob, you are biscuits con connoisseur after all. And in the UK, many of us love to nibble on these sweet treats. And we have lots of names for them too. Yes, we have the chocolate digestive, the Garibaldi, the custard queen, and the jammy dogger. It's making my mouth water. <laughs> I can see, but we are not going to be tucking into any biscuit today. Instead, we'll be looking at the origins and language of this humble snack. And before we do that, Rob, let's test your knowledge of biscuits with a question. The British are aren't the only fans of biscuits. So in which country are Barazex traditionally eaten? Is it in Syria, Morocco or Spain? Right, okay, very good. So we're going to continue now. So here are the pictures of some of the biscuits we mentioned. <laughs> I'm so these are the chocolate digestive. <laughs> These are the Jamie Dodges. Uh -huh. I think these are Garibaldi, I'm guessing. Um, Garibaldi is with uh, some these kind are of... These custard creams. These are the biscuit that they asked us about, where it came from. And it's got sesame seeds. These are typically biscuits from Italy. I Italy. don't know. <laughs> but they look very Moroccan to me as well, what we yes. eat with tea. Yes, in fact, in fact. <laughs> And this last one here, I think they were from Thailand, these biscuits here. So this is a selection of biscuits which we can find. There are so many. I never go down the aisle 
in the supermarket where the biscuits are because it's so difficult to stay away. Right, off you go, Nisa. Mm, well, I have not eaten one, but I'll have a guess at cereal. Okay, I'll reveal the right answer later on. But now let's talk more about biscuits, also sometimes known as cookies. Yes, they come in all shapes, size and varieties. Varieties. Vari oh, again, please. Varieties. Varieties. Okay. Difficult that one. Varieties. Yes. <laughs> yes. Varieties. Okay. They can be sweet or savory. 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 Savory savory but i prefer the sweet ones that are crisp crunchy and are good for dunking in my tea dunking means dipping into liquid for a short period of time but enough about your eating habits rob no excuse me but enough about your eating habits rob let's find out how the biscuit got in name I, I can see I don't know. its name. Its name. Okay. Something in something the BBC Radio 4 program War of Mount uh, of Mouth has been exploring. Dr. Laura Wright. Laura Wright, a historical linguist from the University of Cambridge, of Cambridge, explained its origins. Right. Sylvia, I never interrupt you. I try to lie till you finish. Okay. And when you finish, I will help you then. Because okay. if I stop you, I don't think it's very nice. Okay. So the only word I would say here is Habit. habits. Habits. Okay. Habits. So in Spanish, we wouldn't pronounce the H. Yes, in English, we have to. Off yes. you go, Nisa. Uh, Dr. Laura Wright, historical linguist, University of Cambridge. From Latin, biscoctum, twice cooked. And it comes uh, to us via Anglo Norman French, but it's bread that's been cooked twice to ex extract, extract. <laughs> no, because it's, uh, it's extract all the moisture. Uh, to that, it's got hard. And it will stay, stay fit for con consumption. Consum consumption for a very long time, which is why you can take it to sea and have a sea biscuit, sea biscuit. And from the 1500s, 1500, at least we uh, spelled it like it sounds uh, biscuit. But at some point uh, in the 1800s, we started to prefer the French spelling for reasons uh, of ponciness. Now, ponciness is, is like uh, to be more refined. Uh, okay. Gosh. Now, the only thing here, you should have been more careful with cooked, like cooked. a tea sound, right? I know. Cooked. Cooked. And consumption, but otherwise, very good. Off you go, Sylvia. So the English word for biscuits has its origins in Latin. It describes cooking bread twice to make it hard. This baking process uh, process meant a biscuit could be kept for a long time. And as Dr. Wright said, it would stay fit for consumption. Another way to say edible or able to be eaten. Now, if you watch very old films or you read very old books, you will see that the sailors used to take, maybe Christopher Columbus, who knows, mm -hmm. uh, with him biscuits for the sailors to eat because okay. they needed something uh, to eat. Right, off you go, girls. Nisa. That's why they were taken on long sea voyages. But they weren't like the biscuits uh, we eat now. They were plain, plain, simple, and very hard bucket. Baked. Baked. Interestingly, the word biscuit used to be spelled uh, B E S K E T. E but the French spelling B E S C U E T was later adopted. So Adopt. this one, I get confused as well in Spanish. I, and this ah, one's yes. E. 
So I, I, I always I, I, remember sorry. of this, right? A, I. A. I know. And I. this one is E. e. Look at my mouth, E. And I get confused when I'm spelling in Spanish as well. Because Sometimes, it's yes, similar. because in Italy too. Right? So I and E. e. Okay. I, e. Right. Off you go, Sylvia. Biscuits are a handy go to snack for when I'm hungry or both. Uh, but how did biscuits become such a popular food stop? And how did we come to depend on them so much? Right. It's something Anastasia Edwards, author of Biscuits and Cookies, a global history, talked uh, about in the World of Month program. Listen to the word she uh, uses to mean food in her explanation. Right, Sylvia. Well, okay. One key fat in the rise in the popularity of the biscuits is meal times. Before the Industrial Revolution, people have a later breakfast and earlier supper. By the end of the Industrial Revolution, breakfast, breakfast is much earlier. The evening meal is much later. So you've got this big gap of time where people need su sustenance. Su oh, sustenance. Sus Not substance. So substance. Sustenance. Okay, that's a difficult word. <laughs> and so lunch comes to greater prominence and tea time comes to greater prominence and snacking. So there is this great opportunity for biscuits. Something small, something small, something ready, something easily consumable, con consumable, consumi consumable, not expensive, you know, a bit of a sugar rush. Right, good. Sugar rush is like an energy, no? Yes. So something quick and give you something to fill that gap that you have between meals. Okay. Right, Nisa. Right, so it was the industrial revolution that led to the rise. That's the increase in the popularity of biscuits because the time between breakfast and dinner in the evening increased. People got um, hungry and they needed food to give them energy. What Anastasia called it, so, so, no, substance. 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 Right. Substance. Okay. Right. Off you go. So this is when smaller meals such as lunch or tea became important or more well known. It had greater prominence, and this included snacking on biscuits. Uh, these were cheap and easily cons cons oh, cons cons consumable. Oh, consumable. <laughs> okay. Consumable. Easy and quick to eat, and because of the ingredients. They have you a sugar brass, a quick blast of energy. Of course, now we eat biscuits at any time. And because of their sugar content, we know to only eat them in the moderation, Rob. I think a packet a day is fine, but a whole box, well, that will really take the biscuit. Takes the biscuits. Good idiom there, Rob, to mean uh, be most uh, foolish, annoying, uh, or surprising thing to do. But now let's find out the answer to my quiz question. Earlier, uh, I asked which country are uh, Barazek's traditionally eaten in. And I thought Syria, was I right? Yes, you were. Well done. You are a smart cookie. <laughs> Barazets are biscuits filled with the roasted sesam, seeds, and pistachio chips. They sound delicious. I would love to try some. Right. So there we did the biscuits. I thought it was ah a little bit more. Off you go. Sil Celia? Yes. Okay. Well, uh, well, we've been discussing the language of biscuits and mentioned some of these words. Dunkin describes dipping something like a biscuit into liquid for a short period of time. Describing something as being, being 
uh, fit for consumption, uh, consumption, consumption. Uh, means uh, it is uh, edible, which is another one of our words uh, and means uh, it can be eaten. Sustance is another word for food. And sometimes that has prominence is important or more well known. Okay. And, we, and uh, when you get a sugar rush, you get a quick blast of energy from uh, unsurprisingly eating something contain a lot of sugar. Okay, well, we only get six minutes for this program. That's the way we, the cookie crumbles. So we are uh, out of time. Bye for now. Goodbye. <laughs>